making the top eight yeah. is such a huge accomplishment, and it's something that people keep in their memories for, for a lifetime, really. Yeah, that's an accomplishment that you'll, that'll follow everywhere you go, uh, even from the juniors into the seniors, seniors into masters. We know so many of the great masters players of our time uh, started off here in the juniors. They got huge accomplishments uh, on this world stage, and yeah, let's take a look over at Haruki's accomplishments so far. Yeah, speaking of accomplishments here, we do see Haruki Miyamoto with his 2018 top four at the Championship Series in Nagoya, as well as the top 16 in, uh, in Worlds here in 2018. Of course, being a younger player, he doesn't have a resume that spans years and years and years, but just to see how strong he uh, he participated at the World Championship before, and he's now one-upped himself or maybe even two or three up himself by making it to the finals here uh, in 2019. Yeah, every list of accomplishments has to start somewhere and started pretty strong, honestly, last year, making it to the top 16 and then improving on that now, making it all the way to the finals, potentially becoming the world champion. Now he is going up against Isaac Tercera here, and uh, here we do see Isaac. Remember, Isaac is gonna be on uh, that Reshiram and Charizard GX deck, which has just already shown to be so powerful in the Masters division no doubt uh, gonna be the same here in the juniors. Now, Isaac's accomplishments are pretty uh, solid themselves. Yeah, it looks like he's been playing for a, a few years here and a pretty solid amount of finishes in those regional championships, top eight, top 16, another top eight. Don't know what that international finish was. Uh, Participant. I, yeah, no, just way to go. <laughs> but uh, uh, that's it's very cool. Look at that shirt too. Oh my gosh, I want that. <laughs> Psyduck, uh, a fan favorite of all, you know, amongst Pokemon fans and uh, we do see uh, Isaac sporting the Psyduck himself here. Now, both players are about to start uh, shuffling up and dealing their opening seven card hands in this first game. Remember, in this uh, tournament, you do have to win two out of three games in order to win the match, and in this particular case, the championship. Yep, and of course, we have one of those fabled matchups, the tag team Pokemon are going to be at it once more. The Reshiram and Charizard tag team versus Pikachu and Zekrom tag team. Can't wait to get to the action. Both these players do have their headsets on and they are almost ready to go. It seems like both Pikachu and Zekrom and Reshiram and Charizard have been really the standout decks that came out of uh, out of the last format right before we rotated out of it right here at this World Championships uh, <gasps> with that new Unified Minds Whoa. expansion. Before I get into that, double to Dene, as well as three Lightning Energies in the prizes here. Um, that is not what you're looking for if you're... That's terrifying. He plays three to Dene in his deck, so we'll have one available. But imagine if we saw him start with it. He would just have no way to get through his deck. Oh, that... I mean, these are about as bad of prizes as you can have if you're Pikachu and Zekrom there. Well, really, really close. Looks like he's gonna get a little help from his opponent. No Indeed. Pokemon just yet, so gonna have to take that mulligan. Isaac forced the mulligan his hand away as there was no basic Pokemon in it. So he's gonna have to shuffle it back in, draw a new hand of seven cards, and that's gonna give uh, his opponent one extra uh, card for every mulligan. So, so far, plus one here for Haruki. Yep. Uh, that might not hurt Haruki too much, his Dedenny's in the prize cards, if he can get a reasonably sized hand here. Mainly just trying to get uh, a couple lightning energies into the discard, help out that Tapu Koko Prism Star so that he can really start to accelerate these energies and get ahead of the giant Reshiram and Charizard tag team Pokemon. But yeah, so these uh, these two decks were really the, the maybe the two strongest, definitely the two most popular decks coming out of the last format. And then we well, we traversed into the unknown, right? We had no idea what was going to happen, no idea if these decks were still going to remain powerful uh, after the uh, after several sets rotated out, and now we're seeing both of them, uh, both of them being equally represented here in the junior division finals. So very, uh, very pleasantly surprised to to see both Reshiram and Charizard and Pikachu and Zekrom at the final table. Yep. Isaac just showing off the deck list a little bit, seven by seven. Another mulligan there. Yep. Yeah. It's another way to say it. Sure. Of course. Not as fancy, but <laughs> <laughs> it's the job done. Haruki will patiently wait. So take your time, man. Every card counts. Yeah, I mean, of course, every card does really count here for Haruki, especially as we have the private information of and knowledge of uh, seeing that there are two Dedenne's prize here for, for, for Haruki. Uh, it will definitely start to play a factor in the game unless Haruki just manages to naturally draw into everything he needs, which is just that much more unlikely. Yep. Well, we do see that Isaac did find himself a Pokemon. Let's see if these prizes are too impactful. Doesn't look too bad. Both no, these players prizing a few energies on each side. See if that 
ends up making a difference. There is that handshake. handshake that represents that we are about to get underway. Isaac is going to be kicking things off here with uh, his uh, first turn of the game. Now, he does start with Volcanian, uh, a powerful starter there. But remember, because he's playing that, uh, that more consistent version of this deck, that slower greens exploration version of the deck, we're going to be seeing a, maybe a more methodical approach out of Isaac than we were used to seeing from potentially more aggressive Charizard builds. Yeah, this is the knife safe approach. Uh, you generally get to see a bunch of item cards by way of that greens exploration. It helps you get everything into your hand, and you hope to hold on to it until just the right opportunity. Unfortunately for Isaac, he's playing against uh, Haruki's pretty different list. He has four judges, and he also has some reset stamp as well, I believe. Uh, he will have a ways to disrupt the hand, which is something that we haven't seen too much in this new format. Isaac now looking through his deck with this screen's exploration. It will uh, give him news as to what's, uh, what's potentially prized, but it will also find him any two trainer cards. It looks like he's going for a Cherish Ball and maybe a Fiery Flint there, and that Cherish Ball will be able to find him that Rush Ram and Charizard tag team which means Isaac is going to start being able to power up his, uh, his, his attacking Pokemon and start putting some pressure on Haruki uh, to have a strong start himself. There is that Cherish Ball now as we are going to start looking through that deck again. Remember, these new sleeves always a little bit, a, a little bit uh, easy to drop when you're first starting to shuffle them. <laughs> So it's always nice playing with new sleeves, too, though. Oh, of <laughs> I, I'm, I'd never complain about a deck that's a little too slippery. Yeah, well worth the slipperiness. All right, Isaac now eyeing his options. Always a little bit awkward to decide what you want off of that Green's Exploration to start the game. You don't want to hint too much at what you have in your hand, but you also want to make sure that you play to the best odds you have available. It looks like Isaac did have a Poke Gear in hand, wants to get these four Fire Energies into his hand first before he plays that, give himself the best odds possible to find impactful supporters. Another Green's Exploration or perhaps a Welder would really help him out here over the course of the next few turns. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what kind of a hand Isaac has. Of course, he had another option available to him if he wanted to potentially Poke Gear first and then Green's Exploration, if it, for example, is Poke Gear Miss. Yep. But it, that's not entirely likely, and uh, I think Isaac was just playing with those odds. And uh, he does attach an energy onto his Rush Ram and Charizard tag team before passing the turn over to Haruki. So that is the end of turn one here for Isaac, and now Haruki trying to see if he can match or even best uh, Isaac's start here as it wasn't exactly explosive, but it still gave Isaac everything he, uh, he's going to need for these following turns. Yeah, we'll see what Haruki has available to him. Looks like he's eyeing up a few combinations of cards here. That hand is huge. <laughs> yeah, it truly is, especially given the, uh, the mulligans here from Isaac. So Haruki is looking through uh, his potential options. It eventually uh, settles with a couple of lightning energy discarded for that electromagnetic radar, and he will be finding any two, poke, any two uh, lightning Pokemon here from his deck. Yeah, very crucial that he was able to get those lightning energies into the discard pile that helps him out so much. We'll be able to potentially get those back. He does have that Pokemon communication as well. All right, so he is... Uh, which two Pokemon do you normally find here with the radar? Maybe just like a Pikachu and Zekrom and Zorora, maybe? Yeah, it, it depends on how your hand looks. Uh, a lot of the time we see players uh, go after that Dedenne so that they can continue on, but it looks like he's holding that in his hand as already. Don't know if he needs to put that in just yet. Either he can use that Dedenne uh, to activate that Pokemon communication so that he can go in and find that Tapu Koko Prism Star. Would certainly be helpful for him here. He does have the communication in hand. He is toying with the idea. We see Volkner as well. It's a very useful card in getting this turn one attack off potentially. You always get to search out that energy along with maybe finding a card like an energy switch so that you could attach to the active, then move that energy. You find cards like Stadium Nav to help you out and get the Thunder Mountain going. So now he is going to be playing Volkner as his supporter for the turn. That's a lightning energy as well as an item card that he can find to go with it. This is really the consistency in action here for, uh, for Haruki. Yep, so we do see that Haruki does have that Pikachu and Zekrom available to him along with that Zero Aura GX. Zero Aura gives him that ability so that he can move around freely with a lightning energy attached. Yeah, Zorora really is kind of like that, uh, that puzzle piece that seems to 
uh, either elude you or uh, allow you to just uh, come out come out of the gate so strong. And it's not necessarily the uh, the earliest attacker that's going to be coming out of the Pikachu and Zekrom deck, but it's definitely going to be what allows you to use full blitz early on. And now we're going to be seeing that Tapu Koko, which is you know speaking of allowing you to use full blitz early on, that's about as good as it's going to get there. As Tapu Koko will be able to start. Uh, powering up these Pokemon with the lightning energies that are already in the discard pile. Yeah, it is the only way to get that opening full blitz. You need to have that type of Coco Prism Star. So now Haruki still eyeing his options. He really did have a huge, huge hand. Double custom catcher. He's got electromagnetic radar. He could go off. Just really has to weigh out the odds here. See if it's it's worth going for the the risk of potentially using that electromagnetic radar for Den GX. Old, the old turn one double custom catcher, you know, just how she, just how, uh, just how we wrote it up here. So I see one switch card in the list for Haruki. So generally, that attachment to the active Pokemon means that yeah, he is not going to be going for that aggressive route. Also, chose not to use uh, the Tapu Koko Prism. This could be a little risky. There's certainly ways that Isaac could get a knockout here. It would have to be a pretty nice chain of cards, but he could certainly punish that play there. That's correct. So he does actually find uh, the Welder there, which is a huge, huge pickup here for, uh, for Isaac, as the Welder is just exactly what he wants right here. It's going to allow him to not only power up that, uh, that Rush Ram and Charizard tag team and start getting it to potentially even up to four energies by the end of the turn, but also start to get aggressive. Uh, one of the key things in this matchup, while it's still early on and, uh, and uh, we might have some, uh, some newer viewers here, is that both of these tag team Pokemon deal a lot of damage, right? Oh, yeah. But the, one of the things that the Pikachu and Zekrom deck tries to do is just get so many energy into play through its full Blitz attack that it's just going to be uh, kind of overwhelming its opponent if they start trading knockouts early on. However, Isaac just deals so much damage with his Rush Ram and Charizard tag team. Unfortunately for Rash Ram and Charizard, it only deals 230, right? Only, quote unquote. Only, yeah. <laughs> and it always seems to be about 10 damage short of knocking out um, that Pikachu and Zekrom. So what, is, uh, what does Isaac do? He plays something along the lines of like Shrine of Punishment, and that is going to be that extra 10 damage that we're going to see. The, the real question becomes, can he find that Shrine of Punishment in, uh, in timely fashion? If he can, then that's when things start. Wouldn't it be something if his right thumb was touching that card right now? <laughs> There you go, and it's <laughs> such a crucial, crucial piece of that puzzle here for Isaac, and with no way to really look for it besides obviously Green's exploration, then that's when uh, it just puts a lot of pressure on Isaac to have the card at the right time. All right, well, the turn shifts over to Haruki, staring down a huge Pokemon in that rush room, and Charizard fully loaded on the bench. We do know that Haruki is holding on to that double custom catcher. So could put some pretty solid chip damage into that Pokemon if he so chooses. I wouldn't be surprised to see that actually happen on this turn. I think that that's potentially going to be the best play here out of, uh, out of Haruki. Now he finds that Dedenne. Remember, it's the only Dedenne he has available to him this game, at least until he takes some prizes. And uh, if you can start putting the pressure on that Rush Ram and Charizard before it's been able to attack, then there is always that possibility that you just take a very early victory against, uh, against Isaac. And because his hand is really just so stacked with that double custom catcher and a Dene to go with it and already has a Tapu Koko in play, I would not be surprised to just see that uh, be the play right now. Yeah, when you see your opponent throw away an, an Electro Power, you certainly know that a big turn's probably ahead of you here. Also holding on to one more Electro Power now. Going to go ahead and use that, so plus 30 to any attack from a Lightning Pokemon this turn. I believe we just saw the double uh, custom catcher. There it is, double custom catcher. Rush Ram and Charizard is now the active Pokemon being forced to be promoted here by Haruki. Remember, you need to have both custom catchers in your hand at the same time to be able to pull that off. It is not the likeliest scenario uh, to see that early on, but in this particular case, he did have both, uh, both custom catchers in hand, did Haruki. Yep. And now... We saw the Dede change out of Dedene, which means six new cards in hand. Tapu Koko flies into the Law Zone. That's two Lightning Energies coming into play yep. from the discard pile. Dance of the Ancients going to go ahead and put these energies onto the Alolan Raichu and Raichu along with the Pikachu and Zekrom. Does have an energy along with an energy switch. Because of Zeraora, he can go ahead and move freely to the bench and then move that energy up to his Pikachu and Zekrom to, uh, to start using full Blitz. It would do 180 damage this turn uh, because of the Electro Power that was used earlier in the turn. He's going to get that Thunder Mountain. Start. Does he have the Thunder Mountain? Doesn't or need it. He's got three energies. Energy switch. And a Judge. 
Energy switch instead of Thunder Mountain. There it is. A, so that's three energy on this Pikachu and Zekrom. That's going to allow him to start full blitzing. Judge, though, before attacking is going to mean that we're going to see both players shuffle their hand into their deck, draw four cards. So not only is he going to start accelerating his energy, not only is he going to start dealing damage to that Rush Ram and Charizard before he can attack, but he's also judging away that Shrine of Punishment from Isaac's hand. Yeah, that, that's so, so helpful here. Uh, for Haruki to see all of the cards he needed to perform an attack before using his supporter just means so much more to him. Now he can freely use that judge instead of having to use another supporter card. And he can put his opponent on four cards. And if those four cards don't help out Isaac, we could certainly be moving on to a, a game two as early as one or two turns from now. We knew that Haruki only had one Dedene available to him, but we got to see exactly how powerful that Dedene can be as it allowed for this just explosive turn out of Haruki. It all started with that electromagnetic radar for the Dene there. And now we finally see it. There's full blitz. There's 150 damage onto Reshiram and Charizard. And now Raichu and Alolan Raichu has four energy on it out of nowhere. 180, but yeah. Oh, 180, you're correct. We'll see if they, uh, they catch that. <laughs> he did play Electro Power? Oh, yeah. There was one that was discarded and then one that was played as well. So it looks like they, uh, they did go ahead and catch that. Thankfully, sometimes that damage does add up. It can also get pretty weird with the outrage. Sometimes that can be super impactful for taking a knockout. So I want to make sure that you get that right. There's no six on that die. It's pretty weird. <laughs> it's the, uh, the Pokemon symbol. Yeah, the Pokemon symbol is meant to represent the six there. And there it is. The Pokemon symbol on all three died does mean that there's 180 damage on that Rush Ram and Charizard tag team. Yep. More importantly, all of those energies on the Alolan Raichu and Raichu tag team means that huge knockouts are threatening now for uh, uh, the side of Haruki. He is down two Electro Powers, so getting that uh, 280 damage to potentially knock out a fresh Rush Ram and Charizard tag team could be a little more difficult, but you only need one to hit at the right time in order to swing a game here. What's Isaac going to have to do in order to really swing that momentum back in his favor? Besides, the, obviously, something like Shrine of Punishment, if he can find it. Yep, so Shrine would certainly help him take, the, take a knockout here. He does have Welder in his hand. I'm curious how many energies are in his discard pile, just because uh, he does, I believe he also has that Fire Crystal. Looks like Haruki's going to help me out here a little bit and go ahead and take a peek. Uh, looks like just one energy, so could accelerate one energy. Uh, if he doesn't think that he can find the Shrine of Punishment, could Welder to the active and then hope to find another energy. Use his GX attack for the game to take a knockout, but really would be left with nothing else after that. So could be pretty terrifying for him. Yeah, as you know, as slow and steady as uh, this deck really is for, for Isaac, it really does tend to struggle when the pressure's on, right? Like it puts a lot of pressure on you to have something like Green's Exploration in your hand. If you have it, great. You're going to have a lot of answers to a lot of the questions Haruki's going to bring on. But if you don't, then, I mean, here, here in this particular case, he has to find his one of Shrine of Punishment. Uh, he has too much damage on that Rush Ram and Charizard. Can't expect for it to uh, still be in play at the end of his opponent's following turn. So he wants to start getting multiple attackers into play. All of these things are questions that Haruki has brought to the table with his uh, previous turn. And Isaac's sitting there with a not-so-exciting hand. And yeah, to say the least. <laughs> right. And uh, the questions are, have yet to be answered here by, by Isaac. Yeah, it's really just going to come down to what Isaac finds off the top of his deck. That short pause that we had in the game was for insufficient shuffling uh, on the, the side of Haruki. Just going to have to make sure he randomizes a little bit more. Just a warning, a uh, little bit of cultural differences uh, with that. We saw that a little bit yesterday as well. Just going to make sure that we get a, a nice random deck to continue with the rest of this match here. So great potion uh, being used twice is going to remove... Uh, all the damage. Well, <laughs> it's 100 a, it's, damage. It's all gone. <laughs> great potion's great, but it does have its limitations. Yeah, it's there. not an amazing potion. <laughs> <laughs> and now we see a retreat here at Arash Ram and Charizard, and that's going to allow the Fire Crystal to uh, bring the three energies back. Now, this Thoughts is, on this play? It's very safe. You just saw your opponent use double custom catchers, so probably going to be pretty difficult for him to bring up that Reshiram and Charizard. Buy yourself some time. Use that Volcanion so that you can charge up some Pokemon. This play seems pretty reasonable. Hasn't used his supporter for the turn, so does have access to that Welder. Looks like he's going to go ahead and use that now. Uh, load up his Reshiram and Charizard one more time. Could, if he could find 
cards like Green's Exploration, we could see him next turn use double mixed herbs, remove all that damage, come up to the active spot. If he finds a Shrine of Punishment, he's got a clean Pokemon attacking into this uh, Pikachu and Zekrom. Look at this play. So Isaac uh, did play that Heat Factory to start him, uh, to start drawing more cards for himself, and that allow, allowed him to really kind of uh, not only develop his, his board, but also start to, start, start to find additional uh, answers for the following turns. However, he is now starting to put the pressure back on the Pikachu and Zekrom while keeping that Reshiram and Charizard safe. He's turning up the heat. Indeed he is. And that's going to mean that uh, Reshiram and Charizard will be able to knock out the Pikachu and Zekrom without the, the need uh, for a Shrine of Punishment there, as we do see that uh, Heat Factory get uh, countered there before Cynthia is played by Haruki. And that's just, it's a very interesting and very uh, unique way to, to play this turn out, but I'm kind of liking it. Yeah, I mean, High Heat Blast usually doesn't help in a matchup like this just because the math doesn't work out, but maybe there is a way through Outrage that this could work. Uh, no, I don't I think it really adds up either, so uh, potentially there's, there's a way that this helps, but I'm not seeing it just yet. Uh, of course, always nice to put some pressure on your opponent, but maybe if Isaac had another Reshiram and Charizard, we would have seen him go with an alternate route to set up a second big attacker. So now Haruki... Gets to draw his six cards off of that Cynthia. If we see double custom catcher, I'm just going to walk away. That would be something else. Well, with only two custom catchers left. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, you, you can handle the rest of this, right, buddy? <laughs> I'm up for the task. <laughs> All right. Six new cards. No custom catchers. Don't worry, Kyle. You're still here. And that's a knockout on that Volcanion. It's a very quick turn here for Haruki. Did not need to do much else. Of course, full blitz. Could have... Uh, started to accelerate even more energies, but all the energies are gone at this point. I was wondering even if uh, the GX Tag Bolt attack would do something relevant, but uh, it looks like Great Potion healed Isaac just out of reach of any wild shenanigans there. All right, so now Isaac promoting that Reshram and Charizard. Looking through his deck at the moment. Yeah, he that green's he's got that green, so yeah. what we were talking about earlier with healing himself out of range can certainly be impactful. Unfortunately, I, I, he's still going to have to face this giant Alolan Raichu and Raichu tag team. One Electro Power, right, even if all his damage is healed off, it would be enough to, to stop him here. That Lysander Labs means that can't bring down that Choice Helmet to help you out in a situation like this. And although you can search for a few uh, item cards to help you out here, you need them to heal. You can't also counter that stadium and attach a choice uh, helmet. Yeah, a lot of different things that Isaac needed, and he didn't have any, any of them in his hand already. So he had to use, for example, that Green's Exploration to find that double mix herbs. And yes, the, the damage is going to be off of uh, this Rash Ram and Charizard, but it is definitely a risky play. An Electro Power is all that Haruki's really going to need to get this knockout on Rash Ram and Charizard and potentially just take this game away from, uh, from Isaac at the, uh, at the moment. Yep. So that chip damage from the high heat blast the previous turn means that 230 damage will certainly be a knockout here. Uh, it looks like Isaac's even considering using his GX attack for the game here. Uh, he was thinking of playing that energy onto the Volcanion instead. Just going to take the knockout here. 230 damage, three prize cards for Isaac. So Isaac gets the first tag team knockout of this match, and that brings him down to just three prizes, which means one more tag team knockout will give him uh, the game one victory. But now Haruki, I mean, this is really where Haruki's deck starts to shine, right? This is where as long as he can find that Electro Power and as long as he has enough energy on that Alolan Raichu. Yeah, we're going on a lightning ride for sure. If, if he can find those cards, uh, even a, a Volkner, any, any card to help him find that Electro Power. Also has a ton of cards in hand. I think he's, I see the Electro Power already. So I Haruki has to be sure. feeling fantastic here. He's got a Judge in hand as well, so he's got Electro There's Power. There's Electro Power. Huge Electro Power right there for Haruki. That's going to mean that Reshram and Charizard will be knocked out. And His opponent has eight cards in hand, and he has a Judge. And he can knock out the best Pokemon that Isaac has been able to set up this entire game. The only Pokemon uh, that Isaac's got in play with any type of energy on it. Remember, Isaac's just going to be left with a Volcanion and no energy in play. Haruki will go down to two prizes at the end of the turn, which means two Volcanian knockouts or a single tag team will be spelling defeat for Isaac. Yep, that extra text on the Raichu and Alolan Raichu 
is in effect. All right, there's that judge being played. Both players shuffling their hands back into their decks. Of course, Haruki no longer really needs anything from his hand, so not unhappy to shuffle it back in. And now Isaac just kind of staring at the board, staring at, um, at Haruki's resources and wondering what he has to do to get out of it. How do I beat this guy? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he even found that lightning energy to attach to the Zero Aura, so he will have access to free retreating. Can protect his Raichu and Alolan Raichu by way of that lightning ride. Go to the bench. So if anything were to happen, maybe a Welder Rush Ramp switch, 200 attack to soften up a Pokemon, that will not be targeting the Raichu and Alolan Raichu. These two world-class juniors division players going head-to-head -head in the championship Sunday finals here in this juniors division. And uh, you gotta believe that Pikachu and Zekrom is just a couple of turns away from winning game one, as is Haruki. Isaac though, not out quite yet. Can he find what he needs off of that judge? Here comes Volcanian to, to the active spot. He is promoting it and now he has drawn his card for the turn apparently. So there's Acrobike. Yeah, that ride's not as good as the Lightning Ride. It's only going to find him that Retro Ramage Charizard. Does have Welder in hand, so going to get multiple energies down, but just that limited to the four cards in hand now. We'll see if he can work any magic with that. Probably just going to have to take a turn off here and use Volcanion. Yeah, so Volcanion, I mean, you can attach it to, to the Volcanion and Flare Starter, or you can just attach it to the Retro Ramage Charizard. Isaac. Decides to save his fire energy resources. Now play Shrine of Punishment. Okay, Easy. so this Shrine of Punishment coming down this early is pretty nice, right? It does open up the possibility for, uh, for Isaac to kind of steal this game away. As now, if Haruki can't counter it, then by the time uh, we get to, to Isaac's following turn, then he, maybe he can get another t uh, tag team knockout. The window was open if Isaac were to find his switch card there. That's what he played to when he attached that energy to the bench. He was looking to knock out uh, the Zero or GX so that he could get himself down to just one prize card. And then if he were able to find custom catchers, he could knock out that Hoopo or even a Dedenne for the, the, the end of the game there. Was not able to take advantage of that window, but is going to uh, place some of that chip damage as you were talking about onto the Alolan Raichu and Raichu, which has got to be his target here. Looking for three prizes to close out this game. Math works out pretty favorably for him. If his opponent is not able to counter this stadium, three damage between turns means that 230 damage from a Rush Ram and Charizard would be perfect math to take that down. Would need to find the right cards for it. It's a lot to ask, but we did see him find uh, that Green's Exploration off of one of those Acro Bikes, or I believe the Welder it was, uh, on the last turn. You're not wrong that the window was definitely open for that switch and to really it take over the game. But <laughs> yeah, uh, from here on out, I mean, Shrine of Punishment still a potential. Uh, Shrine uh, of Punishment's gone. Uh oh, that is uh, the Marsh Shadow yeah. with resetting hole. It can go ahead and remove that stadium whenever he so chooses. Yikes. Did not see that Marsh Shadow hit the bench, so Shrine of Punishment was a potential window there. But instead. Haruki kind of boarding up that window as well. Or at least threatening to. Volkner first being played. Remember, gets a lightning and an item card. Just really, really efficient card here for these lightning decks. Don't even know if he has lightning energy left in, the, in there. I don't believe he did because he, he would have probably full blitzed it onto play. Yeah, we may have just one more. No, I don't even think he does. I think he's, yeah, he's just going to go ahead and grab that energy switch. See if there's potentially an attack that he'd like to use here instead of that tandem shock from his Alolan Raichu, or Raichu and Alolan Raichu. Do you, I mean, do you just go for the knockout with Raichu and Alolan Raichu if you don't have anything else? Of course, right? Well, it's kind of scary. I mean, it definitely <laughs> your, is. Your opponent has access to their GX attack. You do not want to bring up a tag team Pokemon. We could see him use their aura as an attacker here just to remove that Volcanion. Uh, put the pressure on your opponent to go ahead and start using that Rush Ram and Charizard now. And maybe you can um, paralyze it in the following turn. And your opponent's already used two mixed herbs. There's certainly windows opening up. It was a hypothetical. Uh, <laughs> Do you like losing? <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
luckily for him, he does have the Zorora as a potential. You know who doesn't need that. five energies anymore? <laughs> well, yeah. that's yeah. true. <laughs> He's like, all right, you've done your job. I'm going to let in our hand. other friends play. A nice lightning energy from the hand for Haruki. Really, really needed that one. Looks like even on the following turn, Haruki does have a judge. So Did not forget to use the Marsh out of there. I'm glad. <laughs> that would have been terrifying. It was scaring me that he hadn't done it yet. Right? <laughs> Zorora threatening to attack the Volcanium, but hasn't done so quite yet. Let's take a peek over at Isaac's hand real quick. Yeah, we do still see that green's exploration. We do see the knockout here from Zorora using that plasma fist. We see power plant come down. All right, so that Plasma Fist did get himself a did get Haruki a knockout, which means he's down to a single prize remaining against Isaac's three still. However, Isaac just needs one single tag team knockout to take this game and kind of steal it from the jaws of defeat in a sense because it does seem like Isaac's just been on the back foot the entire game. Uh, we do see a Fire Crystal bringing three Fire Energies back from the discard pile and into Isaac's hand. Will he find an answer? Or will Haruki take this first game? Reshram and Charizard with only 10 damage on it. Yeah. It is a big, big boy. Isaac's trying to set up a checkmate here. He, he's done a pretty good job. He, he's going to go ahead and turn off all the abilities, take a huge knockout here on a GX Pokemon, bring himself down to that one prize card left. Unfortunately for him, his opponent is holding on to a judge, so could make it just that much harder to go ahead and find the few remaining cards he needs to perform that GX attack to knock out any Pokemon. Uh, in the whole game, <laughs> pretty much. There's that judge right away. Such a huge judge here, Kyle. If he finds something like a Green's Exploration, something like that, that could be huge here for, for Isaac. But if not, then Haruki may just be able to steal the deal. And of course, remember, just so many cards he's going to need, right? Like, not only is he going to yeah, need... So there needs to be a mixed herb yeah. uh, to remove the paralysis. And then we either need to see a Green's for double custom catcher to take a uh, knockout on one of the bench Pokemon uh, with the Raichu and Alolan Raichu obviously being in the active spot here. Or he's going to need to find Welder so that he can use that GX attack and go ahead and take a knockout on anyone. I don't think we've seen any custom catchers out of Isaac yet, to my recollection. You could be right. Yeah, I believe I... Believe I I believe I'm right, 90%. So well, he used one to draw, looking for that switch earlier. So okay. so still three remaining plus a couple of mix herbs. Well, Not the worst thoughts in the world. I There's see, that Poke Gear. I see a yeah, Poke Gear. Poke Gear and a Custom Catcher. Oh, if he already has a Custom Catcher, then all he's going to need is that Green's Exploration with that Poke Gear. Yep, he would be able to find that other uh, Custom Catcher along with that mixed herb to remove the paralysis that's likely going to be coming down here. This is a really, really critical turn for Isaac. Haruki trying to close the door on Isaac there. Haruki, uh, Haruki wisely is going to conserve those energies that he can. Using that switch card, go. he is almost out of energy cards. Tandem Shock is going to paralyze Isaac's Reshram and Charizard tag team. You have to believe that Isaac is just hoping for that Green's Exploration. Oh, There's he's got two opportunities. Here. There is going to be two shots at this. Green's Exploration is going to be the card we're looking for. Four, Four cards five. In. Still no a green as a green's expiration. It looks like the first one misses, but Welder. Welder. Okay. Welder but I don't think he has fire energies available to him, so maybe that window's not going to be available either. We'll have to wait and see, but there's still one I mean, more Poke Gear to go. This removes one more card from his deck. This gives him just a little better odds to find that green's expiration. Thins it out. We randomize the deck one more time. That's going to be one more shot at this Poke Gear looking for that green's exploration. Can't stress this enough. Green's exploration will almost surely spell victory for Isaac. Otherwise, oh, he's gonna make us wait with him. Let's we'll see. Here we go. Seven at a t or seven right there. One at a time. Two, three cards down. Still no greens. Still no greens with three cards to go. One more. One card to gum. Is it the greens? It is no. not the greens. Forced to shuffle that deck right back together. Could not find anything through that final poke gear. We have seen him using a lot of greens throughout this game. Have to wonder maybe if he only had one or one or two, maybe does zero. Have, Who knows? Does he have a way to even lower? Jeez. No fire crystal. No way to play that welder. Just puts Can't the hand down. hand down. Can't even play his hand down to play a custom catcher. And maybe draw into what? Uh, so, oh, fire energy. Yeah, if he can play one more card, use that custom catcher for one, find a fire energy, he'd be set. Force but yeah. Pass. 
I then yeah, that's, that that's that's just about gonna do it here. We'll have to see. 170 damage on that Retro and Charizard just needs to find a switch. Actually, yeah, using that switch on the previous turn may have hurt Haruki here. Of course, he can find Zero Aura, but that power plant is in play. So Isaac's still Cherish in this ball. game. Haruki Cherish Balling, there's Aurora. Now a counter stadium could help. Does have double custom catcher, but his opponent's never going to play a Pokemon ever again. Custom catcher for two. Two cards drawn here. Finds, Finds a judge. judge. There's another custom catcher. Draws one more card. Electromagnetic radar could thin the deck potentially. Do you judge? Maybe play radar first. Should you have played Dedenne first? Oh, man. All right. There's Judge. Both players shuffling their cards back into their deck. Yeah, I'm wondering what the out is for him here. Maybe he has one of those um, tag switch item cards that could help him out here if he could find another tag team Pokemon to perform a big attack here. Um, I mean, all we need is a switch though, right? Yes, if he has the switch, switch then he can just go Dedenne, to the Dedenne yeah. and then retreat. Yeah, so one but switch is all he, we're looking for here for Hurugi. He played a switch earlier, and he only plays the one switch, so... That is not an option for him. He needs to find a, a, an alternate attacker here or... How? Even tag switch, there's, there's, if you retreat the Raichu and Alolan Raichu, you're only going to have one energy left on the Raichu. Yeah, he'd have to find energy switch and tag switch, yeah. send it to the Zerora and uh, take the knockout here. Maybe there's, there's an Electro an energy, Power I out. I saw yeah, he's got the Electro Power electro out power. here. 81, Oh, 10. there's the Electro Power. Of course, Tandem Shock does 110 damage now. And because of that, we see that knockout onto the Restaurant and Charizard. What a razor thin finish between both of these players. It really came down to the wire right there. It almost ended up with, uh, with uh, Isaac being able to just kind of steal it at the end. But instead, Haruki finds that Electro Power in the last possible moment. Yeah, if he had 20 less damage on him, then we would have probably seen Isaac, I mean, we definitely would have seen Isaac win that game there. One more great potion would have been able to help him out there, just couldn't find the cards and wasn't able to close out, but wow, what a finish. He had two Pokegears to find that Green's Exploration, was unable to find it, and certainly is going to be looking for a little more luck on his side uh, in these coming uh, one or potentially two more games. The Juniors Division, no stranger to providing us with such amazing fast-paced action games, but instead this one was more of a kind of a battle of wits, a battle of chess uh, between these two players in a sense, as these players just kind of methodically uh, played these uh, these two powerhouse decks and ran them right into each other. And Haruki was able to come out with the first game victory. Remember, still needs one more victory before he can consider himself the world champion. Isaac not out quite yet. Haruki took a very early lead and Isaac almost brought that back. Yeah, but this is where Isaac's deck really starts to shine. It doesn't matter if it's on the back foot. Yeah, you can, you could even choose to go second sometimes in situations like these and let your Volcanion uh, start to charge yourself up and, and start getting pretty aggressive. Of course, going first is great. So we see him go first and watch his opponent go second. He really doesn't mind that. Game three, he could have a pretty aggressive Volcanion start and get himself in a, in a, in a fair place. This is where best two out of three really shines for a Rush Ram and Charizard deck. Rush Ram and Charizard in the finals. Junior division, down a game against Pikachu and Zekrom and Haruki. Do you need, does either of these players need to switch their game plan up or were both of them playing uh, the correct strategy given the matchup? I, I think both players played pretty flawlessly there. Honestly, there were uh, some opportunities there where you could have increased the odds by maybe one or two cards, but uh, we, we saw them using those custom catchers and uh, a way to draw out to all of their outs. They, they knew exactly what they needed to find in order to uh, swing the game, take the match, or to, to take the game in the opening game there by Haruki. So I, I think both players know exactly what they need to do. It just, uh, someone's got to win, right? <laughs> and uh, we, we see that Haruki was able to come out on top there. Uh, just one Green's exploration could have completely turned that around. So Isaac can't be feeling too bad about what just happened there. He's got plenty of time to turn this around here. Would love to start with a Pokemon though to get this game rolling and he did. So not gonna give his opponent all those mulligans like the first game. Yeah, we saw how uh, how large Haruki's hand really got uh, in that first game. Uh-oh, uh-oh. He had available to him. Hey now, 
Three custom catchers right away, though. You can't do that. Wow. Okay, so. Heat Factory, too. Heat Factory being prized is also never a good thing. You have to believe that despite the Heat Factory being prized, uh, Isaac definitely got the better end of that exchange. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have never been more sure in my life, yes. There is an acro bike to kick things off here for Isaac, but wow, Haruki still has no idea that his prizes are as bad as they are, but he will be getting that bad news sooner than later. And then he'll have to plan accordingly. Remember, this first game was decided because of that double custom catcher early on. Isaac uses Poke Gear here, finds two greens exploration. He's wondering, why couldn't I find you five minutes ago, man? Where have you been? And now he plays that greens exploration. Finding any two trainer cards, putting them in his hand. Yeah, one of the more aggressive routes that you can take with the greens exploration is uh, getting aggressive with that fiery flint and heat factory, start drawing a lot of cards, but uh, not going to have that available. Instead, going to use this uh, strategy of shutting down his opponent. He could lock in this power plant if his opponent does not have Mars Shadow or a, another stadium card. There's that fiery flint discarding a great potion and another card will find himself four fire energies. What a great exchange. Three cards for the price of, well, four cards for the price of three. That's a good deal. All four of those fire energies gonna be put to really good use in the, in the turns to come as he already has a welder in hand. Of course, he's already used a supporter for this turn, but on the following turn, we're really gonna start seeing some fireworks out of Isaac. And there's that power plant in play, like you said. So now, Haruki, before he can even really start to get his momentum going, will have to find an answer for that power plant if he wants to start using Dead A Change. <laughs> he found his one custom catcher. He must think that he's so close to being able to <laughs> one more <laughs> bring any Pokemon into the active position. I don't think he's targeting a Volcanion anytime soon, but. <laughs> uh. Cherish Ball finding any GX Pokemon in the deck here for Haruki. Half of those GX Pokemon are going to be pretty useless with that power plant in play. Not sure what the rest of his hand was holding, but of course you can always just go for that Pikachu and Zekrom. Give yourself a nice Pokemon to start attaching energies to, and if you can get that full blitz going on turn two, then yeah, you're going to be pretty happy. Looks like we do see that Lysander Labs. It's going to help out tremendously. It's, this is a, a card we've seen. We've even seen this in some of the Jirachi versions of Pikachu and Zekrom. That, uh, those, those play as skateboards. And uh, it's just such a, a useful card in other matchups, along with just having a counter stadium to power plant. You, we've seen Lysander Labs come down and be so tremendously helpful. Yeah, it really is. It's, um, it's one of those little gems, right, that when it does... When, it, uh, when its effect does come into play, it's almost game-breaking. And it, we saw a lightning energy get attached onto that Pikachu and Zekrom before he played the Cynthia, did Haruki. So now shuffling his hand back into his deck, drawing six new ones. And remember, he has yet to use Dead A Change for Dedene, so this turn could still go on a little while. Yeah, unlikely to see that turn one attack. It looks like Haruki is just hedging his bets here, gonna make sure that he gets off this turn two attack. Uh, attaching to that Pikachu and Zekrom doesn't want to have to rely too heavily on this draw here. Of course, it does have Switch, so there's always outs, but yeah, it looks like double Volkner. This is a nice, consistent hand, but not too explosive. Finds a Zorora, immediately benches it, and passes the turn right after doing so. All like, right, was unable to disrupt his opponent's hand, so we should see all these fire energies coming down. Right away, we see that welder. We see two fires come onto the restroom and Charizard. And three cards drawn here for Isaac because of that welder. There's that fourth fire. Oh, he's cooking. So, does he have double custom catcher? He does. He could take a knockout double on Zeror if he wanted to. Or he could put some pressure Pikachu and onto that Pikachu Zekrom. and Zekrom. Puts 230 damage onto that Pikachu and Zekrom. 10 damage away from being knocked out. Yeah, this is a beautiful strategy here for him. Going to go ahead and put all this damage and the pressure onto this Pikachu and Zekrom. Force your opponent to have uh, a way to either accelerate energies uh, or that Thunder Mountain Stadium card. 
so much damage onto that Pikachu and Zekrom on the second turn of the game. Really, you get to see how Isaac's uh, aggression can really start to turn on if he gets to go first in this matchup. Double custom catcher, just so, so powerful. And both of these players have been able to trade back and forth be, uh, because of that in these first couple of games. Now, Volkner, the supporter of the, uh, of the turn here for Haruki, does Haruki have a game plan in mind already with his hand? There's a Stadium Nav. Stadium Nav, of course, if you get a little bit lucky, will be able to find you. Yep. Thunder Mountain. Not like that Green's Exploration that can go ahead and search for the Stadium card. You gotta have to play that Stadium Nav and get a little bit lucky. It's easy to assume you're just gonna, you're just gonna uh, Oh, it's free, it. yeah. Just but, <laughs> man, those 25% chance when it doesn't. Have you ever seen me play that card? It's not pretty. I just assume you find any two stadiums <laughs> in your deck. <laughs> All right, Stadium Nav. Here, Here we go. Is. Here's a big roll. First Got it. already a heads. Second one, a little bit less relevant, but gets the heads anyway. Why not? So, pulls the Sable House and finds any two stadiums. You in must be talking about Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. Uh, looks like he, uh, he's either choosing to go with only one or maybe uh, we missed saw and there's only one heads. Yeah, it looks like he's just going to go ahead and jump uh, directly into his deck here with the full blitz. There's save that full save blitz. ourselves yep. a little bit of time here. 150 damage onto the Reshiram and Charizard and three energies onto the Alolan Raichu. Raichu and Alolan Raichu tag team. There we go, 150 damage there. All right, now, as explosive as... Isaac's start was he is not sitting on anything helpful here. He does have great potion, so he could remove a little bit of this damage here, bring him down to only 90 damage on the active Pokemon. Yeah, his hand really just, despite obviously providing him with a Rush Ram and Charizard with four energy. It only did two. 230 damage to a bench Pokemon on the <laughs> second turn. You know, but I don't see a supporter, right? Like yeah, maybe it's that's the, that's the problem. Yeah. Uh, the other the other list uh, of the Rish Ram and Charizard deck, uh, play Jirachi and Dene's, uh, generally can start to burn through their deck, but uh, this deck is so reliant on the Greens engine, that Welder finding you more supporters, and it uh, looks like Isaac is just going to have to take this conservative approach. Well, I honestly, he actually got pretty aggressive there. He and attached he also, the yeah, energy. He yeah, this is, the fifth fire he's, in, he's all in on this guy. He, I don't know how conservative that was. Well, as a conservative as his hand would play, he went energy attack. <laughs> So, yeah, he, remember, he's going to basically force Haruki to find an Electro Power there. He was not able to counter the Stadium as well. So this, oh, this could true. be impactful, too. That is true. Raichu and Alolan Raichu. Three energy on it already. We see that Electro Power. That electric pow Electro Power is so huge. Yeah, even then, Tandem Shock is uh, going to be doing 190 damage. Yes. That would be a knockout exactly. here. Doesn't that have to use his GX attack. Yep, that Electro Power was very, very important to find here for Haruki, as Volkner does find it quite easily. Man, just such a powerful item card if I've ever seen one. That's right. I mean, it's, it makes the short list of uh, uh, b uh, most powerful item cards ever made. We thought plus power was good. Yeah, no kidding. I still think plus power is good. I think these Retro and Charizard decks would love to play that card instead of Shrine of Punishment. I completely agree. Electro power. Boom, 190 damage. There's a the hand stock. Five energy down. Only Volcanion in play for Isaac. And probably going to find some of those custom catchers that we were talking about. We'll have to see what prize cards he did take. We knew that three were in the prizes. I believe he is holding two in his hand now. So if we got to see the uh, Reshiram and Charizard come into play, we could uh, see a lightning There's ride. A, oh, my goodness. Pokegear missed this completely. Oh, man. He found that Pokegear, which was really, really nice, but it is just not a guarantee to find anything, and we've seen him miss with it more than once now. Does he have... He has another Volcanion, so he's still in this game, but... Haruki wants to cut the deck here for Isaac. He's but just going to go back in. Yeah, no worries. He's going back in. So Flare started the attack... For Isaac before he passes the turn back over to Haruki. Haruki, three prizes remaining. Same as Isaac. We've seen that prize exchange before, but this time around, Isaac just unable to get start powering up another attacker. You have to believe that all eyes are on Haruki here to start closing this game out and potentially become the first world champion of this weekend. 
Yep, Haruki has amazing attacks available to him. He could just retreat and use that Zero Aura. He does have Thunder Mountain in play, so doesn't need to really do anything else here. Can go ahead and find himself a way to move an energy on the following turn, potentially, if there was a counter stadium. Therefore, he could set up that Lightning Ride, or he could give himself the Electra Power so that he could do 280 damage uh, to a Reshiram at Charizard if it were to ever become available. And it looks like he's going to go ahead and get that, self, that set up for himself, uh, make sure that he has outs to just about everything. Isaac has to be wondering when he's going to find a supporter card because he is staring down a monster of a Pokemon right now. Yeah, Raichu and Alolan Raichu already quite powerful, but after giving them multiple turns to just keep stacking energies and uh, Electra powers and whatnot, it just becomes maybe inevitable. <laughs> and uh, really, Isaac is now has not only has pressure to start drawing, you know, into aggression, but also something like a reset stamp to go with it. Yeah, a lot has to go right from this point forward. Uh, th that's the kind of the problem with the way that the deck is built. Usually just add piece by piece by piece and set yourself up. And instead, he's looking for a lot of pieces and he has not find them. We'll see if that top deck helps. I don't think it will. One Pokemon left in play for Isaac. Maybe perhaps about to extend the hand, perhaps about to keep this game going. One Pokemon in play though. Shrine of Punishment counters the uh, Thunder Mountain finally. And now there's... Looks like we see the Swan yes. Song from that Volcano. It's going to go ahead and attack. So now all we have to see is just... Retreat. Roland Raichu be promoted. There's another Tandem Shock, another knockout. And finally, Haruki Miyamoto is crowned your 2019 Junior Division World Champion. Incredible job by both of these players. Give us amazing match to start off Championship Sunday here.